Chapter 10 I stare at the sagging mattress, then back at Grandad. What, you, you think I should just crawl in there? Grandad nods. And visit Raw? He says it like it's suggesting a trip to the pier. But Grandad, Raw was a game. Remembering a dragon biting me is my mind playing tricks on me. But what if it's not, Arthur? What if you and Rose made Raw with your imaginations, then crawled through the camp bed and somehow found your way there? I smile and shake my head. <laughs> if I crawl into that mattress, I'll come straight out the other side and you'll be standing there laughing at me. Well, if that happens, at least you know you imagine the sound, the funny sound and being bitten by a dragon. And you can get on with turning this attic into a den. And if I do end up in Raw? I can't believe those words have just come out of my mouth. Grandad's eyes go wide. Now, wouldn't that be something? And then he actually holds the mattress open for me and says, In you go. I don't know. I glance out of the window to make sure Rose is still on the trampoline. There aren't many things in the world she'd find more hilarious than the sight of me crawling through the camp bed, trying to get to Raw. There she is, jumping up and down and trying to touch her toes. I'm sure I imagined it, I say. It was probably a bird in the chimney or... A scuffle makes me turn round and see that Grandad's head and shoulders are stuck inside the mattress. What is he doing? He must think that if he goes in first... I'll follow. He pushes in his arms and then starts wriggling from side to side, trying to get his bum in too. Then I hear a faint cry of, Hear me roar! The sight of a 72-year-old man attempting to squeeze his body into a folded camp bed is like a slap in the face. What am I doing? Rose is right. I'm way too old for this. I should be learning to surf or skating or fighting stuff on the computer. Anything would be better than playing in the attic with my granddad. When granddad comes out the other side of the bed, I'll tell him I want to take the camp bed to the tip. It's time for me to grow up, or I really will be eaten alive at secondary school. Hear me roar! Grandad cries. Then with a final lurch, he gets his bum and legs into the bed too. Then he just sits there. A big bulge in the middle of the mattress. It reminds me of the time I saw a nature documentary about a snake that swallowed a pig. It's pretty funny, actually. All right, Grandad, you can come out now. I try to give the bed a shake, but it weighs a ton with him in there. Grandad's hands pop out and waves around. Are you stuck? I grab hold of his hand and put his fingers wrapped around my wrist and I start to pull. But he won't budge. And now I'm laughing because Grandad has got me to play just like he wanted to. Come on, I might have done a wee in there, remember? Suddenly, Grandad's fingers tighten around mine. Ow! I say, still laughing. Then I sit down on the floor, put my feet against the bed and pull as hard as I can. But Grandad doesn't budge and his big hand squeezes even tighter around mine. In fact, his fingers are going white from the pressure and my hand starts to hurt. Grandad, stop it! Panic rises up to me as the pressure increases. It feels like the bones in my fingers might break. I pull harder than ever but I'm not trying to get Grandad out. I'm trying to free my hand. Grandad, you're hurting me! Suddenly, he lets go and I tumble backwards. Then, with amazing speed, his hand shoots inside the mattress. What? I cradle my squashed hand to my chest and I stare at the bed. The lump has gone. Grandad? I jump to my feet and circle the bed, patting the springs. Grandad, where are you? Silence. My heart thuds against my ribcage. I grab the headboard, ready to pull the bed open. But something stops me. It's the memory of Rose saying, 
never open the camp bed. Arthur or everything in Raw will disappear. I let go of the headboard. Rose was talking rubbish. I tell myself, there is no roar. There can't be any roar. But I still can't bring myself to open the bed. The attic feels unbearably hot and I'm shaking with panic. I brush a tear off my cheek. Come on, Grandad. It's a good joke, but you can come out now. I know I'm talking to myself. I know he isn't there. In a daze, I check every corner of the attic, even under the bed. But except for Prosecco, the attic is empty. I tell myself that Grandad has to be in bed, has to be in the bed, and I kneel down, take a deep breath, and push my hand into the mattress. It's horrible. The hairs on the back of my neck prickle as I feel around, desperately hoping that my fingers will touch some bit of Grandad, but my hand just keeps going further and further into the mattress until finally I do touch something. But it's not Grandad's trainers or hair. It's a load of spiky, prickly stuff. I grab it and pull it out. When I uncurl my fingers, I have to squeeze my mouth shut to stop myself from being sick. I'm holding a pile of yellow straw and greasy black feathers. I chuck the whole lot on the floor, then reach forward and pick up the largest feather. It's inky black and the quill is sharp and warm, as if moments ago it was attached to a living thing. A living thing with wings and stuffed full of straw. I jump to my feet. I have to tell Rose. <laughs>